on and off, the figure always appeared in my work. When I started again in 1999, I went back to draw from the model, which I hadn't done in a few years. And um, I realized that I had missed it. And then I started working on a series which was based on those drawings, which had to do with the human figure as this wonderful, incredible machine that we are given because it houses our spirituality, our intelligence, our way of behavior. It's a commentary on the human condition. I'm interested not, in, not only in the body and its beauty and, and youth, but also I think the body has its own beauty um, uh, towards uh, the later periods of, of life. As a classically trained artist, Panina is a master of anatomy. It's one thing as a studio artist to, uh, to work from sitters or from photographs. It's another to do expressive works that are done very quickly and reveal the artist's mastery simply through the, uh, the speed and flexibility of, of the line. And I find it very interesting that she continually returns to the figure, particularly in her more, most recent works where she's using uh, a very expressive brush to paint life-size images of dancers. Um, once again, it's a return to the human figure. The Dancer series is a series I've been working on for the last two years, and they're based on photographs taken during rehearsals of Ballet British Columbia. It's all about movement. It's about movement through painting. These are the most basic forms of art. It's painting and dance. Human beings have been swaying to the rhythm of music, dancing around the fire since time immemorial, and they have also put their marks on cave walls. Seeing those dancers dance, those beautiful bodies, those wonderful positions, I thought, this is really the body at its best. I was interested in, in doing a, a book on Panina uh, because many years earlier, uh, back in the mid-1970s, uh, we had encountered her work. So when she came to us in the, in the 90s with the idea of, uh, of doing a book, we were quite excited. We felt that she you know, was one of the um, most distinguished and, and, and prominent West Coast painters and certainly deserved a book. For a book on my work, I had to do a lot of research in my files and slides and essentially relive all my work. And I realized that there was a, a, a theme coming through my work always. And that was the theme of dualities. Uh, it started with the angel and the devil from the Magic, Magic Childhood series, with nature culture in the stone series, with light and darkness in the Alhambra technology and humanity, there's always this kind of duality. And there's always this striving towards integration between the two.
when someone is born and raised in a country, in one language, in one geography, uh, without moving anywhere, one grows roots. Well, for me, it was a history of dislocation. I moved from Romania to Israel, which was the first uprooting from Israel to the US, the second uprooting, and then to Canada, which was the third uprooting. And I realized that my life, um, I could almost see it as a diamond, which had been cut, and each side of the diamond would reflect another aspect of my life. And that's how this thread runs throughout all my work. Panina's work has, has always uh, struck me as being highly lyrical and yet it's got a great deal of uh, body and mass to it. So when you look at a, a Grenier painting or one of her prints, one is continually finding things in it. For instance, she will use a disguised portrait of one of the family members. The other thing about uh, many, of her, many of her works is that they have a tremendous solidity uh, of the West Coast very, very large and impressive, and one, one feels the landscape is coming alive. That sense of our relationship to the landscape. The Trials of Eve, which I consider one of my major works, I try to deal with the um, uh, situation women found themselves in and resolve it in some way looking towards the future or where, where we're going and what our goals should be. I belong to the same generation as Panina. We both belong to a generation where there were certain things expected of a woman and the place of the woman in society. So Eve, in that sense of being trapped, it's part of a whole evolution of uh, the, the female in our society. Sometime in 1986, I was visiting Panina in her studio, and she opened this drawer and pulled out these paintings called The Trials of Eve. And I was absolutely astounded. They had um, such power and such impact on me. I knew immediately that I wanted to make a film using this material. I saw this as a way of doing a film that was a little experimental, a little different, but at the same time, at the heart of it, had a really positive message. A sin great enough for God himself to judge. Freely to the witch's hut to come. Eve stands prisoner behind rigid bars. The softness of life-giving womb is cursed now. A painful duty and not the joy of life created. I mean, I really believe equality of men and women doesn't mean sameness, but a true coming together. You know, there is a happy ending, although all of us every day have to struggle within ourselves to find that balance. From Panina's original concept, the, with the Trials of Eve, the cannibal birds replace the serpent in the original, in a reworking of the, the um, Adam and Eve myth. And it was very important for me to maintain the integrity of the spirit of the cannibal birds, because this is at the heart of this First Nations culture. But a devouring will to know, bursting from within, cannibal birds pounding on the mind, temptation to find out the innermost secrets of God. The Cannibal Birth series, uh, it's interesting because I've been working with a series on the, about the West Coast images. 
And since I'm not a landscape painter, I looked at things which symbolize the uh, landscape, like leaves and um, um, imprints of all sorts of um, uh, textures of nature. And I thought that the um, native people are an integral part of this landscape. They've lived here for a long time, so I introduced them in the paintings. Uh, masks and um, uh, sometimes I would um, use rubbings from uh, Curtis photographs and things like that. And little by little, uh, the idea of the cannibal bird came in. And I realized that the cannibal bird ceremony, which is a ceremony for finding yourself, and I did a series based on that, where the cannibal birds and the trees appear in those uh, series. And it's almost like the trees are our souls that we wander through and we come face to face with our demons, with our cannibal birds. And unless we face our demons, we'll never know who we are. The millstone quarry is another uh, image that I used a lot. This is a very magical place on Gabriel Island near Vancouver. It's well hidden in the forest, and it looks like a surrealistic place, as if a huge a giant had come with an enormous cookie cutter and just cut those holes out of the bedrock. And uh, now those empty holes are filled with water and plants, and they're like empty eyes staring to the sky. It's, it's really an amazing place. It's a heritage place. So I did a whole series uh, based on that. The Carved Stone series was a very important uh, body of work for me because that's where I became aware of the wonderful rocks of the Gulf Islands here near Vancouver and the great sculptural forms they had. And I've been trying to highlight it and try to integrate the culture represented by those sculptures and nature which is represented by our stones here in Western Canada. Later on, I decided to take well-known sculptures and reintroducing it into a stone landscape to bring it back to the source, an integration of culture and nature. Uh, here, the victory on either side, and this is a rock formation from, called the Malaspina Galleries from Gabriola Island, which has this incredible sweep of the winds, uh, similar and uh, echoing the uh, stone goddess, which brings her back into the source uh, in a very effective way. Another component of this carved stone series were uh, the paintings which I call Stones of Worship. I took paintings like the Pieta, for instance, uh, which was a piece of stone of marble carved in order to be worshipped. And I 
put her back into a stone, back into the source. The same thing with a Venus with a horn, the ancient prehistoric sculpture, which becomes part of the stone again. And many other sculptures like the Venus of Willendorf that essentially echo in a very strange way the natural formations. I was at a ballet BC performance with my husband and uh, he comes back to the seat and he says, you have to see these paintings. We go running upstairs and we looked at these amazing dancer paintings and then we kind of, you know, took note of the artist's name and went home and, you know, hoped that we would see her work at some point. And then not very much longer I saw an email from Panina Grenier and she had seen a performance of mine and um, she was getting in touch with me um, because she had enjoyed my performance and um, that precipitated us actually meeting and since then I've gotten to see um, the dancer series develop. Quite a departure from the um, support of the canvas, of uh, the traditional way of painting on canvas or on paper, came last summer when I started to do some works on clear mylar, like clear acetate sheets. Each uh, sheet of acetate carries the image of a dancer. It's just a drawing, an outline. And they're set one in front of the other, so you can see one through the other. And then with lighting, the added shadows uh, create for more drawings. When these are hung from the ceiling, it looks like they're disembodied figures floating in the air. And then I worked with a dancer who performed a dance coming in and out through those mylars. And then the human body actually becomes part of the work itself. exhibition was called the Dancer's Suite. They were these splendid figures on mylar sheets which were hung between uh, paintings so that you had the impression of light and air and a kind of sparkling movement. There were a series of uh, colored, um, that is oil, acrylic, watercolor, she uses a lot of mixed media, brilliant colors, reds, blues, with black markings on them, juxtaposed with line drawings on mylar. So you had a sense of ethereal space with the juxtaposition of a solid paint and color with line drawings on mylar, 
uh, of dancers moving. And it seemed to me that she caught the very notion of the ballet through what is basically a, a static form. After an exhibition is over, life returns to normal. And what is normal for me? For me, it is going back into the studio to create new images. And the newness of each image enthralls me. There is nothing I like better than coming back to the studio the next day, and there on the wall is my new work, a stranger, and yet my child, but already separated from me. Like the birth of a child, I have to learn when to stop, when it is time to let go and allow the painting to live its own life.